If you want to win more games in FM24, then this is going to be the video for you. We'll be looking at five different ways, five different things that you can implement into your Football Manager game to take your team to the next level. And whilst none of these are going to guarantee a win, each of these things is going to give you that little 5, 10% boost chance in your match to get the win, to get the three points, and hopefully get you some more trophies and success in FM. If you do get any use out of this video or you enjoy it, we'd massively appreciate it if you could smash the like button for us. That'll really help us in the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe if you haven't already as we get close to 175k subs. We are doing daily football manager content here on the channel from tactics to tutorials to the best players to sign. So there really is something for everyone. Everyone, so make sure you've clicked that button and finally comment down below what tip you'd have for people to win more games and hopefully that way we'll have a big list that people can read in the comments the last thing I need to point out though is that you will see we are Leicester here in this save and at some point you might notice we're one year in and the league table doesn't look amazing for us we did get promoted we finished third so some people might look at this and go how can you finish third with Leicester and then tell us how to win more games well don't worry this was a simulated season I didn't actually manage them hands-on it was part of a rebuild that we did for my channel which you can find linked in the description if you do want to check it out so yes just wanted to point that out so you don't think wow I must be really bad at this and these tips don't work no don't worry it's nothing like that now we've got a balance of some really advanced things you can do to help your team here to really minimal changes that you can make and the first one that we're going to look at is analyzing your tactic now I don't just mean looking at your tactic and thinking oh you know we're a bit light in some areas let's change this to a attacking duty because we're not attacking enough let's change this one to a defensive duty you get the idea. Yes, you can do that, but I actually mean hitting this analysis button up here, and there's going to be a part two to this tip straight away on what we're going to learn. So if we hit this, what this will do is give you a rough idea of how your team is covering space. The areas that are green are the spaces that your team is covering well, and the areas that are red or orange is maybe where we don't have enough presence in that area. So you can see here on this left-hand side, we clearly don't have enough of a presence in this formation, in this shape. And the reason for that is we have a central midfielder on the attack who's going to be floating into these kind of areas and inside forward on the attack who's going to be floating in those areas and then you'd think that your left back would cover that space but for us it's an inverted fullback so he'll be coming in and almost joining up as part of that three man defense when we're in the attacking phases so this area is definitely not covered very well and that's going to lead to a lot of chances conceded in that position that we might want to alter our tactic to try and help so that might immediately tell us okay there's a slight issue with our tactic that wouldn't have been immediately clear just by looking at it that we might need to adjust to get a little bit more coverage in that area and this can have some serious negative effects. I know a lot of people can get a bit overwhelmed by the data hub but there are some useful bits of information in here that will link well to our tactical analysis. So obviously we highlighted that red area there where maybe we're not getting enough coverage on that left hand side. Now if we go to team and then analyst report you can see that is having an effect because if I go to conceding goals all the goals we've conceded and look at where the assist came from on that right hand side where we seem pretty fairly covered we've conceded four goals from assists in that area. So let's say crosses coming in from that area, maybe passes coming in. Through the center, we're conceding a lot. That's likely because we have two very attacking central midfielders. But you can see the difference between the assist caused on the left and on the right and that is definitely going to be because we're not covering that area of the pitch very well which is something we might want to analyze and try and help so just by seeing that red area of the pitch and doing a bit of an investigation we can straight away see there might be an issue with our tactic and adjusting that is definitely going to help us win more games whether that's just setting our defender to full back on support maybe we want to change Dewsbury Hall to say a box-to-box -box midfielder or a deep line playmaker just to give a little bit more of a presence in that area he's not going to be directly in that left hand side but it will at least give us a little bit more of that depth in that section and now if we go to the analysis you can see the area is covered a lot better I'm not saying this will be a better tactic than what we're using but it's definitely helped us with identifying a weakness in our team to try and improve let's move on to tip number two on how to win more games now this was an addition to the game that came this year and that was of course set pieces in FM24 having a complete rework now if we go to tactics and set pieces and then move it on to the attack Often people will leave it as this, you know, set up a scenario, forget about it, and that is fine. You will get plenty of goals from it, but there is something you can do just to vary up your corners very easily. It takes an extra two minutes or so when setting up your corner routines that's going to lead to so many more goals over the course of your save. Now, if you imagine being a manager of the opposition team and seeing every time corners were done the exact same way, they might start to think about how to defend it and eventually your corner routine won't be as effective. Now, I'm not saying 
football manager AI managers have the capability of doing that. I don't actually know if they do, but either way, it's always good to vary up your routines to offer you some more routes to goal. Say you come up against the team who's got a very tall player at the near post and all of your corners go to near post, you're going to be less likely to score. So if you set up a few different routines, you give yourself the best chance of scoring. To do so, come up to this section here. You can then go ahead and create some extra routines. So you can add one and then add another. And what you will see popped up then was this screen here, which allows you to set the frequency of which ones happen more often, do what you like with it. You can have some routines being a bit more frequent. Maybe you want to do a short corner a little less frequently, whatever you like, then you can go ahead and click OK. Now you don't ever have to do this again in your save or actually ever, ever, because what you can then do is if you find a routine that you really like, click this drop down, click save routine or save all routines if you like all three. And next time you join a save, you can hit load all routines and bring those routines straight in no matter what team you're playing with. You won't have to rework it. Definitely something very easy to do. Like I say, takes a few minutes and then you never have to do it for the length of your FM save. A player's morale is also very important in Football Manager. The dynamic section is so underappreciated, I think, but having a happy team team is going to make the team play so much better. Happy players are going to play so much better than players that aren't unhappy. So you always want to be making sure you're motivating the dynamics, the personalities of your team. There's quick, easy ways to do this and there's ways that you should be doing throughout the season. For example, let's take Jamie Vardy. If you want a quick boost in his morale before a match, one thing you can do is go to praise player and then praise conduct. This is an easy way to get a player's morale up unless they've been missing training or anything like that. You can pretty much praise the conduct of every player and the especially before the big game. If you do this for all of your players, you will get a nice little morale boost. It won't work on every single player, but it never seems to have a negative effect. It will either be a neutral effect or positive. If we go for Jamie Vardy, we're going to say that he's done really well. And you can see his morale was superb and it is still superb. But if you do that to enough players, eventually some of them will have a positive effect. On top of that, you always want to be stimulating them mentally in terms of if you've got a player that's unhappy, don't just decline it, speak to them, keep their personalities in check. One great thing to do as well is criticize those strikers that aren't scoring often enough. Criticize the players that aren't playing very well. Criticize their training performances. When you see their training performances drop below a certain route. Doing all of these things and having these conversations with players when the time is right is going to give you those little morale boosts that are really going to help you win more. And the same goes for team meetings. If you want to do a big morale boost for the whole team, you want to go to dynamics, I think it is, and then to the team meeting section. The season's over here, so we won't be able to do one now, but particularly before a big game, after a poor run of form, after a good run of form, you can really reinforce a squad. If they've played badly, speak to them, say, look, we can work on this, we can get better that'll give you a boost. If you've played really well and won your last five games, speak to the squad and say, you're doing amazing, let's keep it up. And that'll just give you the extra bit of an edge in your next match because the players will be happier and then they'll play better. The next tip to win more games in Football Manager is to focus on your opposition instructions. If you go to the tactics screen and then across to opposition instructions, what you can do is set certain targets on players. Maybe you tackle a certain player harder. Maybe you push a player onto his weak foot and this is going to give you a special advantage. As you can see, we've got a friendly coming up against a team called Par du Bis and our analysts know nothing about them. However, if this was a Premier League match against, say, Aston Villa, they might be telling us, oh, Leon Bailey, shift him onto his weak foot or, you know, Ollie Watkins, get close to him, whatever it might be. You'll often get some opposition instructions be provided by your assistant, which you can work on. I really don't think you need to do these yourself. Go through and set all these, you know, analyze every single squad member and what you want to do to them. You could do, but it's probably a little bit of a waste of time or at least a bit excessive and something most people won't have time for. So the easiest thing is when you're playing a team that isn't a friendly match like this, you'll get given opposition instructions from your assistant. Usually it's best to click the button that puts his instructions into place and then tweak it from there. You might not agree with something that they've said to do, so you can change it, but it's always a good idea to start with their opposition instructions as a base set and move on from there. Now, if we actually go for this game in the friendly, if I get there, when you get to the point where you're going into the match, you can click opposition here and then you can do it straight away from this screen. That way you don't have to worry about remembering every time time to go to tactics and opposition instructions. Whenever you get to a match, go to this section and providing it's a team that you know something about, most teams you will, you can go ahead and use the assistance recommendations. That's going to help you get a little bit of an edge in the game. It's going to nullify some of their stronger players or at least try to, which will hopefully help you out and get more wins. And you can see we are loading into this match here because I want to use this as an example of some extra things you can do in the in-game engine itself to help your team out. Now this 
is one of the more obvious things that you can do in the game, but I know a lot of new players might not know about it. And that is shouts in Football Manager. You can see them in the corner here, shouts. You might be a little bit too scared to click on them or do anything, but don't worry. They are very simple and you don't really need to use every single shout if I'm being honest. There's a few that you can use that are going to help your team. Firstly, the ones I like to use, praise, particularly the entire team or players that are playing particularly well by clicking the individuals button. Only do this though when you are two goals up, not one goal. I've had it so many times where the team is one goal up, I've praised them and then they've gone, oh, you know, why are you praising me, boss? We're not doing very well. So it's not worth doing that. Yes, it can work sometimes, but just make sure you're two goals up or more and then praise them. That will give them a little bit of a morale boost in game and help them play a little bit better. If they're not doing very well, I like to demand more. If it's still nil-nil, demand more seems to work. If you're expected to win the game, if you've gone one nil down, I'll still demand more. I don't mind using encourage from time to time. I don't mind using berate if a player is doing really badly, but I think those can have sometimes negative effects as well. And they may be a little bit risky. So for me, demand more and praise are the ones I'd always go for. I have often used focus as we get towards the late stages of the game, but I can't say for sure whether I think that's had a really big impact for the team. Fire up if we're ever getting battered can sometimes help if we're two or three goals down early on, firing up might help the team out. But again, I think praise, demand more. They'll get you through very easily and give you those little boosts in game to help your team out. So there's five little things that you can implement into your game to give you that extra percent chance of winning from giving your players morale boost to shoutings on the pitch to focusing in on your tactic and seeing through the data hub where things are going wrong. We've also looked at set piece routines as well. All of these things, if you implement them, can give you that extra chance of winning. Hopefully some of these will have been new to you. Things like shouts, I know a lot of people will know, but just hopefully my insight there on the best ones to use might help you guys out and on top of that I'm hoping some things you never knew like that data hub one where you can see where you're leaking goals that can really help you and I've actually had great success with that putting in a stop gap in that area to stop leaking goals so much and then the team has played so much better so thank you for watching hopefully you've enjoyed it and pop your tips in the comments down below and I'll see you next time goodbye